Welcome to this special video that will take us on a journey through time and history, as we explore the incredible and unique story of the discovery of Queen Hetep Heres I, II, the illustrious lady at the heart of establishing the fourth dynasty of pharaohs in Egypt. This historical and archaeological moment in 1902, when the mystery surrounding this tomb and its unique treasures unfolded, holds many secrets and questions. We will navigate through the renowned plateau of Giza to learn the tale of Queen Hetep Heres I, a prominent figure who played a significant role in the foundation of the Fourth Dynasty and the ancient history of Egypt. We will shed light on the moment of discovering the tomb and the artifacts it held, examining the mysteries that still surround the fate of the Queen's mummy and the enigma of its disappearance. Join us in this exciting journey as we delve into the details and events that paint an exceptional story of one of the most important women of the ancient state. It remains a challenge for scholars to this day, and we will unravel the ongoing mystery that captivates minds around the world. The remarkable story of the discovery of the tomb of Queen Khufu's mother and its full treasures. Who was Queen Hetep Heres I? Firstly, her name pronounced in hieroglyphics as Hetep Heres, not Hetephers as some people pronounce it in YouTube videos, articles or books. Queen Hetep Heres I lived during the fourth dynasty of ancient Egypt, a period marked by the transition of power from King Huni, the last ruler of the third dynasty, to the first ruler of the fourth dynasty, Pharaoh Sneferu. Archaeologists believe that this transition occurred because there was no direct heir to Huni from his royal wife. Consequently, the throne passed to Sneferu, possibly through his marriage to Huni's daughter, Hetep Heres. There are some opinions suggesting that Sneferu might have been the son of Huni from a secondary wife, and he legitimized his rule by marrying his non-royal half-sister, Hetep Heres. This practice of intermarriage within royal families was not uncommon in ancient Egyptian dynasties and was often used to strengthen political and familial ties. This woman held a grand status in the establishment of the fourth dynasty's foundations. Her name, Hetep Heres, means, her face is beautiful. She was the daughter of King Huni, the wife of King Sneferu, the mother of King Khufu, and the grandmother of two kings, Jedef Re and Khafre. Additionally, she was the great-grandmother of another king, Menkori. Without delving into complexities, the fourth dynasty began with King Sneferu, who succeeded King Huni after marrying Hetep Heres, giving birth to King Khufu, who, in turn, succeeded his father on the throne. Khufu was succeeded by his son Jedefra, then his other son Khafre, followed by his grandson Menkori, connecting all these kings through one person, Queen Hetep Heres. The queen's contributions did not stop there. She gave birth to another daughter, Hetep Heres II, who married her half-brother, Prince Ankhav. Ankhav served as a minister to his half-brother, King Khufu, and played a significant role in the construction of the Great Pyramid. He is mentioned in the inscriptions of the Wadi al-Jath papyri as a supervisor at the construction site of the Great Pyramid. Moreover, he is considered a potential engineer for the construction of Khafre's pyramid, the middle pyramid at Giza. This lady held many titles reflecting her esteemed position. She was, Sat Nata, in Gart, if, meaning daughter of the god from his body, indicating her royal lineage from King Huni. She was also called, Mut Nesut, and, Mut Nesut Bati, meaning mother of the king and mother of the upper and lower Egypt kings. Additionally, she bore the prestigious priestly title, Ket Heru, signifying the follower of the god Horus. Where was the queen buried? The burial places of King Sneferu and his entourage were initially thought to be in Maidam, located in Beni Suf, where the king initially chose to be buried. His sons, Prince Ra Hotep and his brother Nefer Mayat, were interred at this site, which included one of Sneferu's pyramids, the Maidam Pyramid. Despite the presence of burials for the king's family members in Maidam, evidence suggests that Sneferu himself was not buried there. There is also no indication of the burial of Queen Hetep Heres at this site. It seemed logical, therefore, to begin the search for these burials at the Darshaw Necropolis, the second site chosen by King Sneferu for burial. Here, Sneferu constructed two major pyramids, the Bent Pyramid and the Red Pyramid. Clues pointed towards the likelihood that the royal cemetery of Sneferu, and likely his final resting place, was discovered there, particularly within the Red Pyramid. It was also believed that Queen Hetep Heres, his wife, might be buried there as well. However, at the beginning of the 20th century, a discovery occurred that would overturn previous assumptions and change everything. 
In 1902, an expedition led by Harvard University in collaboration with the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, under the direction of American Egyptologist George Reisner, commenced excavations on the Giza Plateau. This mission, one of the most important in the region, spanned nearly 25 years of continuous excavation and meticulous documentation of every step and discovery they made. In March 1925, while Reisner was in the United States, a photographer from the expedition, adjusting the camera tripod to capture a photograph, accidentally plunged one of the legs into the ground. The expected limestone was replaced by a layer of plaster, leading them to unequivocally realize the deliberate concealment of something beneath that layer. After removing that layer, the workers at the site realized that the shaft was exceedingly deep, eventually reaching a length of over 27 meters. The entire shaft was intentionally filled with gravel, a practice employed by the ancient Egyptians to seal tombs and ensure the sanctity of the burial. Clearing the debris and gravel from the shaft took an uninterrupted week of daily labor, led by Foreman Ahmed Said, the chief worker of the mission. Upon reaching the bottom of the shaft, they encountered a wall leading to a chamber. Breaking through that wall, they found themselves face to face with an incredibly pleasant surprise. Treasures of Queen Hetep Heras Inside that chamber, numerous unique artifacts were discovered, leaving visitors in awe at the Egyptian Museum. We found one of the oldest sets of furniture anywhere. Here is the Queen's carrying chair. Four men hoisted it up on their shoulders to carry her around. The tomb contained two beautiful gilded chairs with ornamental designs. A series of elegant bracelets with butterfly inlays was placed in their own box. On top of the sarcophagus were poles from a bedroom canopy and a long box for the canopy's curtains. In a niche in the western wall, an alabaster canopic chest held the queen's internal organs, still in liquid form after nearly 5,000 years. The alabaster sarcophagus provided a great mystery to me and my group of distinguished visitors. Among these treasures are her exquisite silver jewelry adorned with delicately crafted butterfly motifs. Additionally, there are her gold-plated bed, chair, portable tent, and even her carrying litter. The visitor is then left with a mixture of astonishment, perplexity, and various emotions. One cannot help but marvel at the progress, personal luxury, and wealth achieved by the ancient Egyptians at that time. Simultaneously, there is admiration for the wonders of ancient Egyptian craftsmanship and their excellence in those early eras. The excavation team found these treasures stacked in an underground chamber, and in its center, they discovered a finely crafted alabaster, marble, coffin. They believed that the queen's mummy might be inside it. Alongside this find, they also uncovered the canopic jars, urns used to contain the organs, including the liver, stomach, intestines, and lungs, after they were removed from the body and individually mummified to prevent the decay of the corpse. After a month of excavation, in April of the same year, it was confirmed that this burial belonged to Queen Hetep Heres I, the wife of King Sneferu. The discovery strongly indicated that her mummy was likely present inside that exquisite coffin. The Mystery of the Mummy of Queen Hetep Heres In most archaeological discoveries of burials, whether for kings, nobility, or even commoners, lightweight and less valuable items are usually the primary targets for looters. These thieves often leave behind pottery and items without significant material value. While they may violate mummies to extract any amulets they contain, they typically leave the mummies behind. Even if they leave them in a deteriorated state, at least something remains. However, in the case of Queen Hetep Heras, everything valuable was present, yet the mummy was missing. It is evident that this burial was conducted in this manner meaning that the ancient Egyptians buried this collection of treasures and placed the coffin in that chamber without a mummy inside. Why wasn't the mummy placed in the coffin? And where did the queen's mummy go? At that time, George Reisner provided an explanation for this mystery. Reisner inferred that the queen was originally buried in the Darshaw necropolis alongside her husband Sneferu. The burial in Giza appears to be a mere reburial. This burial was a shaft in the heart of the rock indicating secrecy and an unusual occurrence. Reisner concluded that the queen was initially buried next to her husband in Darshaw, and her tomb was later violated, leading to the destruction of her mummy. Here, the officials responsible for the necropolis found themselves in an unenviable situation. They proceeded to rebury the queen in that secretive burial with the remaining treasures from the original tomb. 
This reburial is believed to have taken place during the era of Khufu, who moved his mother to be buried next to him. This belief remained widely accepted among many scholars for a long time until the mid-90s when some evidence emerged, revealing more secrets. Lost Pyramid Next to the Pyramid of Queen Khufu, there are four smaller pyramids, three of which still retain their main blocks, while the fourth is completely shattered. These small pyramids are labeled G1A, G1B, G1C, G1D, with the letter G indicating the Giza Plateau, and the number 1 indicating the largest pyramid. Initially, scientists believed that the pyramid labeled G1A belonged to Queen Meritites I, one of the wives of King Khufu. However, in the mid-1990s, the renowned American archaeologist Mark Lenner proposed a different theory. Based on evidence found during his work, Lena Reet tributed this pyramid specifically to Queen Hetep Heres I, the mother of Khufu. This raised another issue. If this pyramid was dedicated to the Queen's burial, what does the presence of the pit containing the Queen's treasures signify? Lena explained that the pit was the original burial for the Queen, and King Khufu, her son, built the pyramid for her burial. When the pyramid was completed, the Queen's belongings and her mummy were transferred there. The items found in the pit were left behind after the Queen's burial in the pyramid. With this information coming to light and Lena's hypothesis, other opinions emerged. Some suggest that the pit was the original burial for Queen Hetep Heres I, possibly intended to have a visible part above ground, such as a pyramid. Egyptologist Zahi Horus, on the other hand, argues that the G1A pyramid was the original burial and the pit where the treasures were found was created due to the theft of the Queen's belongings from the pyramid. Despite decades of intense excavation efforts on the Giza Plateau, as of now, Queen Hetep Heres the One Street's mummy has not been discovered, and there is no definitive explanation for its absence, whether inside the attributed pyramid or the pit where her treasures were found. In the end, Egypt secured the findings, now on display in the Egyptian Museum. While the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, produced an exact replica of some key items discovered in the tomb. As we conclude our exploration of the astonishing discovery of Queen Hetep Hera's tomb, we are left with a captivating tale that transcends the boundaries of time. The enigma surrounding the Queen's burial site, the treasures unearthed, and the mysteries that persist to this day leave us with a profound sense of wonder. In the heart of Giza, where the Great Pyramids stand as silent witnesses to the ancient civilization's grandeur, Queen Hetep Hera's story adds another layer to the rich tapestry of Egypt's history. Despite the passage of millennia, her legacy endures, resonating through the artifacts uncovered in her tomb. While the whereabouts of the Queen's mummy remain elusive, the journey into her burial chamber takes us on a captivating ride through the achievements and mysteries of the Fourth Dynasty. The intricate details of her life, her familial connections, and the treasures carefully interred with her unveiled glimpses of a bygone era. The archaeological efforts that revealed Hetep Hera's tomb have allowed us to peer into the distant past, sparking curiosity and fascination. Even as questions persist, the discoveries stand as a testament to the unwavering dedication of archaeologists and historians who continue to unravel the secrets of ancient Egypt. May the story of Queen Hetep Hera's inspire us to appreciate the marvels of our shared human history and the persistent quest for knowledge that fuels our understanding of the past. Join us in celebrating the wonders of antiquity and the ongoing pursuit of unraveling the mysteries that echo through the corridors of time.